Hello, and welcome to the OVPRE Research Portal. Proposals and Awards This electronic system allows you to create proposals, track awards, and prepare renewals or continuations, all in one place. This module is an introduction to smart forms. The following instructions focus on getting you started on a new proposal. Instructions for working on resubmissions, continuations, or renewals can be found in their own video modules. Please check our website for the entire menu of video module subjects. Smart forms is a series of question and answer pages that allow you to provide information about your proposed project. When you have populated the required sections, you will have provided the information needed to begin the electronic management, processing, and tracking of your proposed project. In addition to creating a data file, the information you input here will create the transmittal to pre-populating certain areas of the SF424 for sponsors who require that form. You will use smart forms for federal, non-federal, state governments, private for-profit companies, or foundations, in short, all sponsors. The example used in this module is for a federal sponsor. The following instructions for using and navigating through smart forms are the same for all sponsors. Smart Forms will provide you with the correct data input pages, based on the type of sponsor you choose. Let's get started. From your home page, click on the red, Start New Proposal icon, on the left side of the screen, just under, My Roles. Clicking on, Start New Proposal, takes you to the first page of Smart Forms. Use the Back button to go to the previous page. Use Continue to move to the next page. Use these instead of the navigation buttons in your browser. In the top center of the page, you can click to Save or Print. The first question on page 1 is Short Title of Proposal. Note that this question is mandatory. Throughout Smart Forms, the red asterisk always means a required field. On the far right side of each page are expanded descriptions for those fields that are not self-explanatory. In this example, we have filled in the short title of the proposal and the optional full title. Note that question number 3 Program Director Principal Investigator, Fellow is pre-populated with the name of the login user. If you are creating a proposal where someone else is the PI, PD, Fellow, you would choose the Select button and fill in the appropriate name. If you have the Bio sketch available for the PI, PD, you have the option to attach it here. Select the prime sponsor. Smart Forms allows you to enter and search in several ways. Enter the sponsor name by typing directly into the box. Smart Forms will start a pop up window of possible choices. Highlight click on the correct sponsor, and it will be populated into the form. You can also choose the Select button first and a window with advanced search options will pop up. From here, you can choose from several more advanced search options as needed. This description for searching and populating smart form input boxes applies to all similar input boxes throughout smart forms. After selecting the name of the sponsor for the project and answering question 6, you can then enter the names of other proposal team members who will have proposal access rights. These people are not named on the proposal, but will have access to the proposal to help you complete forms, 
upload documents, etc. This section is optional because it will not always be needed, but it is an important area as it allows you to build a team of colleagues and staff who will have access in order to assist with this proposal. To give someone edit or read rights, you can begin typing into the box, or just click on Add. In this sample, we have given CoPI2 edit rights. Continue to add all needed team members for edit or read rights by clicking on Add. You can add as many as are needed. You can also delete people from the list. Note that smart forms can be edited at various stages of the proposal. In later modules you will see some applications of this function. This is also a good place to do a save of your smart forms if you have been working for some time. After you have saved information to smart forms, your save print options will expand to save, exit, hide show errors, print, and jump to. These options are now at the top and the bottom of each page. We will revisit hide show errors and jump to later in this module. Additional personnel is an optional screen that will be automatically included if you said yes to the question, will there be other individuals named? This is the page where you add co-PIs and any other key personnel who will be involved in the project. On this page, section 1.0 is for adding key persons at UGA. Section 2.0 is for adding non-UGA key persons. Clicking Add here pops up an Add Institutional Project Personnel fill-in box. Add your institutional project personnel information in this fill-in box. For Section 2.0, follow the same procedure to bring up a pop-up box for non-institutional personnel. Begin adding your non-institutional project personnel information. After filling in the non-institutional data fields, click OK and continue adding personnel as needed. Click Continue when finished. Your next screen is credit information. Here you will be filling in the academic, F&A return, and Center Institute credit information that will be a part of the data used in routing to department heads, deans, and other UGA signature authorities. This information will be familiar from past OSP transmittal forms. Next, begin by clicking on Update beside the name of the PI. Again, you will use Add to begin filling in the needed information. If your project includes cost sharing, matching, see the instructions to the right of the screen. If your project does not include cost share and or matching, just click Continue. This slide begins the sections that pertain to specifics of sponsor and project type. Note that type of application pre-fills as new and in this sample, federal. It is new because of the choice you made at the very beginning of this module, and federal is pre-populated from your previous selection, at, select direct sponsor. On this page, you will fill in any compliance review areas that are relevant to this project. It is mandatory that all options be populated with either yes or no. The Financial Conflict of Interest section will pre-populate based on information previously entered. This is where you will be able to determine that some key persons need to be contacted about required FCO I compliance. The Laboratory Animal Research page is auto-added because of the previous selections. 
you will fill in this page with the relevant and known information. The hazardous material usage page is automatically added based on the previous compliance issues selection. The information on the right side of the screen will direct you to ways that you can search for opportunity numbers. You must add the opportunity number and then click Find. When your matching opportunity pops up, choose it. Next, click Continue. Funding Opportunity Announcement When working with a federal sponsor, this screen will tell you if the required forms are fully supported by the eResearch portal. You will learn more about using the information on this page in our module, Federal Proposals. This screen asks about program income and is automatically added because the sample proposal is federal. On submission dates, 1.0 is pre-populated based on the opportunity number. 2.0 pre-populates based on how many days are required for OSP review. For 3.0, this date does not auto-populate. Enter an estimated date unless the guidelines provide a specific date that you expect to receive a response. Expected start date is self-explanatory. It auto-populates to the date you are creating your proposal, so you will have to change it to the appropriate expected start date. After updating the start date, click Continue. Always click OK, as this message is not optional, but the result is that your budget will still start on the date that you chose for expected start date. Budget periods for 1.0 budget period, advanced editing. Read the information on the right side of the screen before choosing an option and proceeding. Completion instructions is the last page of Smart Forms. On this page, you will see additional instructions for moving on to create and edit other sections of the proposal. One option is to complete your submission by clicking Finish. You can click here to create or update your SF-424. If you are updating the SF-424, be aware that you will override any previous manual changes made directly in the existing form. Click OK to proceed with the update. If you are the PI, you also have the option to submit to OSP. Next, we will cover some helpful features that will help you navigate smart forms. Earlier, we mentioned that as you begin to populate smart forms, the options at the top and bottom of the screen expand to include more than just save and print. This screen shows the use of the hide show errors function. You can check for errors by using the hide show errors function. At any point where this option is available you can click this and any errors up to that point will be shown in red. Click here to jump to a page that contains errors. You are taken to the screen where you can see and correct the errors or save and return later. The jump to Option allows you to navigate within Smart Forms to any page either forward or backward from where you are. Jump to always displays the page that you are currently on above the menu. Next, click on any section within the menu to navigate forward or back to another screen. In this example, we have navigated to the 
1.4 General Proposal Information Screen This navigation tool is useful to quickly refer to information on previous pages that you need for your current page. Later, when you are processing resubmissions or renewals, you will find this function useful for editing an existing smart form. You have now completed smart forms. You have created a record for your proposal that will follow the project through its life cycle. You have also populated UGA internal routing forms and have provided information for the SF424 where needed. Let's get started. You have now completed the smart forms training video. Thank you for your time. Be sure to check out our full menu of getting started training videos here.